So here we are in quarantine Dublin. In Ruth's fancy apartment. Yes. yes. We can't right. leave here now for three months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my apartment, my roof. Is that why we all got coasters on our drinks? <laughs> I don't I, I've never used a coaster for a can of Guinness before. But. <laughs> it might spill a little bit. And then who'd have to clean it up after you? This no, bollocks, that's who. Normally when someone says, my dojo, my rules, or my, my apartment, my rules, it's not finished with, now be polite and use a coaster. <laughs> Oh. All right, well, excuse me, but my apartment, my roof, you know, no matter, I don't care what you guys think. <laughs> <laughs> I think you find he does. Yes, just a little bit. So we're here, quarantined, stuck. we've just actually done a, a online seminar. Mm. I think the, the first of its kind. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not oversell it. <laughs> um, we, we trained with uh, a couple of us in the dojo who have been sort of quarantined in the dojo, I guess, for the last um, week and a half. Um, so we were training together, two metres apart, you know, social distancing and all that. I am um, dying for a bit of kumite, by the way. Mm, yeah. As soon as we're allowed to touch each other again, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get what for? <laughs> um, but we had, a, uh, I don't know, it seems like hundreds of people in on, on our yeah. Zoom app to, to take part. Yeah. Um, consider it a success for a first sort of trial run at that sort of thing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There, was, there was like, what, 70, 76, something like 80 people uh, um, on Facebook Live and there was like, I don't know, f like 10 pages of, of swipeable kind of people on Zoom and there was like four or five people on each page. So yeah, that's another maybe 50 or so. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Excellent. How do you find how do you find teaching online, Ross? Because Ross and I have been teaching online a lot. Um, I think that you, uh, I find it physically tougher than normally teaching in the yeah. dojo because you, when you're teaching in the dojo, you have time for them to work away and give people feedback and stuff like that. Whereas you're quickly scanning through while they do ten techniques, giving them as much feedback as you can, and then you're jumping on to the next thing. And if normally training in a, in a group the group kind of pushes each other along, but they're individually training and you have them on the screen there as a group. So you have to be the one that has brings that energy level up. So I think you're probably performing uh, physically, mentally, vocally much more than you normally would have to in a normal class. So I find it a bit more challenging. Yeah, me too. Yeah. You because they're all in their own living room, you sort of, and you, can only, you can't look at everybody at the same time. So you have to trust them to an extent that yeah. they're following along and that they're trying hard. So, but because you can only trust them so far, because you know what they're like when they're in the dojo in real life. So you have to be like, come on now, speed and power, just like me. And you end yeah. up get, wrecking yourself. I was, I was dripping sweat today. Yeah. I, did base, I did the same class three times for my three beginners classes today. And then I did like a more specialized version for my advanced class today. And I was training along for the whole thing for the whole two hours. So by the end of it, my, I was doing shoulder stuff. My shoulders were absolutely wrecked. But it actually, um, it was actually really good then because like I was telling them the point of this was you'll use your core more and you won't be just shouldering through your blocks and stuff like that. And then when we were doing all your uh, chokazukis today, Scott Sensei, I felt really loose and nice, felt good. There you go. Excellent. But, so we have to, so like when we're teaching online and we're putting in all this extra energy, do you think that's because we teach so much, we've kind of found a way to preserve our energy, to kind of get through the day? Or the sky. Found a way to, to achieve maximum result with minimum effort. And in fact, people who only teach once or twice or three times a week are actually... Um, well, people who do that usually train along with their students, don't they? So they would be burning a lot more energy. It's case by case. I think it's also just like there's no waves of of kind of breaks. Like I once I once saw Billy Connolly once said that when he played when he played big arenas, like and he'd tell a joke, there'd be waves and waves of laughter come in, mm -hmm. and and he and he'd give you a, a a kind of a lull where people are laughing, and then you deliver the next line and the next line. But then uh, he went up to kind of the Isle of Skye or something, or or the you know somewhere 
in the outback of Scotland and did a gig and there was like 40 people in the room and they're like, yeah, that was great, next joke. All right. You know, and it was yeah, like yeah, yeah, instant, yeah. instant, instant. Like, and so like when you're in a small group and, and, and also when there's zero feedback, it's like, yeah, okay, that was great information, next. Okay, that was great information, next. Where, where you, you, you know, you can't, you, within a bigger group, you, you get that natural kind of like, oh yeah, okay, okay, I'll try that. And blah, blah. the same when you're teaching seminars. Yeah. Like big seminars and little seminars. Big seminars, you get through less material because they're like, oh yeah, and there's, oh, but what about this? No, oh, what about that? Whereas little seminars, it's like, okay, great, yeah, okay, next. So It's the exact same playing the gig. Yeah. If there's three people in there, as soon as you stop singing, everybody becomes painfully aware of the deafening silence in the room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and because there's only three people there, your stage banter is kind of pointless uh, because there's no one to laugh, there's no one to, you know, give you a friendly heckle or anything. So you just get on with it. You just play like 60 songs in two hours. Or... <laughs> yeah. Here's another one by Bob Dylan that none of you have heard before. <laughs> Yeah, so it's been, a, it's been an interesting transition, but I think we, we were doing an okay job. The feedback from the members seemed to be good. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, so what, uh, do you think that there's a, a positive to be had from this quarantine, from, from having to result, like, because before, like a few weeks ago, you would never sort of associate yourself with online classes. I don't think it's kind of like, it's one of those things in the cry when you hear about people doing like online gradings, online classes and stuff, you're kind of yeah. like, yeah, you kind of have that, ooh, yeah, really? Little like, grimace. <laughs> whereas now we're all forced to do that. Mm. People are finding new ways. Like I was watching actually uh, Donna Her, who's like a jiu-jitsu, George St. Pierre's jiu-jitsu coach. Mm -hmm. You know, the, these MMA guys and stuff laugh at karate for their katas and stuff. He's in the dojo, do, you know, doing a jiu-jitsu drill with no one to grab onto. And it's oh. like, I guess he got put up and he's like, oh, no, everyone's doing kata. Yeah, <laughs> there, you, there you see, you see. Like, That's great. So, you know, people are having to adapt. Do you think there's a, a positive outcome to us having to adapt to this sort of structure? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, go on. No, but I mean, ultimately, the test is, what is better? online or real real classes you know what's better online grading or normal grading what's better online training or real training obviously the real training is always going to be better i mean it's it's the the only like if i i'm forced to kind of draw a positive then like it it me it forces us to be adaptive but like that's only really in a business sense in a business model sense mm. so like we're, we're forced to be adaptive um, in order to keep the dojo running because, you know, it, it's a, in, in no small part, it's a business. So, so we have to do that. But I, I, don't, think, I don't think that the, the students are getting um, as much in, compared to a normal class. Yeah. So then, it, you know, the positive maybe you could argue is that it forces the students to train harder and to think more and to be more proactive in their learning. Um, that would be a positive. And if they come back you know, the whatever number of students that have uh, participated in it, if they come back with a, a greater sense of, of the, the skill of learning, that would be a positive. But, you know, I'm really scraping the barrel there. Yeah. I think that it's, it's been... Mm, I think that it shows... It, like, uh, it shows something about... I don't, want, I don't want to say the character, but definitely the level of dedication of students who have tuned in because not all of them have mm. so the students who are joining the zoom meetings some some of them have taken me by surprise and i've been like oh actually you know what that kid does love his training he's always in a great mood always hi sensei you know so mm. the kids who love it the most are the ones tuning in and now we know like you know now we know <laughs> which exposed, ones yeah. exposed. <laughs> it's exposed the other ones mm. and also um we're kind of big heroes now the kids, the kids find the novelty brilliant that they can have sensei in their living room or their kitchen. I have noticed that they are, like, as soon as you start your video and they log on, they are very, they're ecstatic to see you. Yeah. They are very, like, excited, very, you know, like, more more enthusiastic about karate than ever before. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it is just because it's a, it is a novelty. It's something new for them. And it associates, you know, I love being on the iPad all day and now I've got my karate on the mm. iPad all day you know so uh, uh, maybe there's a correlation between that like uh, you know or oh, since he's actually on the screen or on the TV or whatever it is so I think there's a positive for that I think the po one of the positives is that the amount of like we have put in a lot of effort to try and provide 
you know, karate for the students. And I think that it's been really well received from parents, from members yeah. in general. Like they are very happy with what's happening. So get being in their good graces, I think, is a positive. You know, the fact that they're appreciating the effort and stuff, I think, is, is a positive. And it maybe maybe in return that that will install some sort of you know. Um, dedication back whether it be in training or supporting other events that we do and stuff maybe they'll, they'll see that this is more than just a place to drop your kids off it is something that we're as a community exactly i think the feeling of community has grown stronger among some members yeah. and another huge positive for me has been that i don't have to cycle 20 or 30 kilometers all around the city to my uh, classes outside the dojo because they're all closed <laughs> I would say the body does. The body is relaxing a lot more, you know, with the, mm. the decrease in hours that we're teaching. Like the aches and pains are starting to go away. I find myself in classes being able to push myself a bit more because I don't have to worry about you know straining myself or anything like that. Physically, it feels I feel better than before. I'm able to train harder. I agree. That's good. That's good. You better explain to people though what what we're talking about because by the time you get this online, the coronavirus will be a distant memory. <laughs> no, no, I'll put this one up quick because I've got nothing really? else to do. <laughs> Back in twenty twenty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of our episodes are really dated, but I swear, I swear, I'll put this one. What day is tomorrow? Sunday. I'll put this one up tomorrow. <laughs> it's a busy boy. I'll do a, a double bill with um, the uh, one with uh, Martin and Rick Sensei. Okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, this one, this one would be it would be a bit crap if it was that dated. I have, so, to, I have to say though, like the 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 biggest positive is is for my wife who is driving to work, kind of without any traffic. She's going to the office and normally she's pestered by the hundred and fifty other people that work in the same office. Like this week, there's been four in the entire office. Whoa. It's spotlessly clean because the cleaners are still coming in and cleaning it, but nobody's there. <laughs> She's going to the gym, and uh, and and like there's nobody in the gym apart from the people who are specifically booked into the lessons. She's she's living her best life. Wow! <laughs> but then then this, this, this yesterday evening she got a message from the uh, the gym saying that they were shutting, and she's like, oh, the gym is shutting. She's like, now I feel people's pain. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that privileged, privileged life. <laughs> she might have to uh, come down to the dojo. Yeah, yeah. I heard she's got a fourth down. I, yeah, I see that. <laughs> yeah. She's still got it, like, still got it. Yeah. Still got the magic. And yep. so that leaves you minding Duran all day, does it? Well, yeah, so, like, I've, I've been, I've, like, so, yesterday, I, apart from not leaving the house once, I look forward to having Zoom drinks with my brother and sister-in-law mm -hmm. for the entire day. <laughs> and and that, that was my highlight of my day, was sitting on the kitchen table, at the kitchen table with my brother on a laptop in front of me, wow. drinking and having a chat with him. And, we're like, and then we got a takeaway, and, uh, and, and Tor said, oh, we better not eat it until we finish because we've got guests. <laughs> I was like, is that is that the, is that the etiquette of Zoom drinks? <laughs> Might as well be, I suppose. Weird. We we had Paddy's Day Zoom drinks. Yeah, it's quite fun. Yeah. Like. But Rue, so tell us, um, how was Florida? Your trip to Florida, how was it? Hang on a second. Q, Q, <laughs> Q was taking the piss out of Rue. <laughs> well, Ross. I wasn't in Florida. Oh, weren't you? Oh, we were in Florida. Oh. No, I wasn't there. There was three of us. I thought it was us three. Yeah. No. Uh, no. Oh, no. It must have been somebody else. Yeah. Oh, it was Tommy. Yeah, Tommy. Tommy. Was Tommy. 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 It was Tommy. Okay. I was here. <laughs> covering all your classes. <laughs> with AJ. How was Florida, guys? <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Should we move on? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> Let's talk about that at length. Um, how many Winter Caicos have you been to in Sarasota? Uh, that was the fifth. I say uh, Winter Caico, it's the warmest winter I've yeah. ever experienced. That's the what joke. <laughs> Why do they do it in February? That's that's supposed to be springtime, isn't it? No. Oh, don't get one, <laughs> one around. About... Here we go. <laughs> is February not spring? No! Okay, <laughs> Jesus. Winter yeah. is... November uh, is December, January, February. Spring is March, April, May. But that means summer that... is June, July, August, and autumn is September, October, November. 
But that means November, yeah, November's not... Um, Winter, not correct, autumn. it's autumn. <laughs> it's not. It is. <laughs> it's, it is. <laughs> It feels like winter to me. Oh, well then. Well, as long as we take the scientific approach of how it feels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've heard that rant 12 times now. Or something. <laughs> yeah, I heard it once before and I forgot. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> but how many, sorry, how, how many times did you say? How many winter Keikos is that? Five. Five winter Keikos. Yeah, and first. this was the best one ever, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Talking about that awkward silence. <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was like others in some ways, and unlike others in other ways. What, what was the, the the what made it like the others? You two embarrassed yourself, <laughs> <laughs> and more importantly, embarrassed me. No. Now, now, well, folks, no. I wasn't there, so I I cannot be. Uh, I, the blame the blame is firmly not on me, and firmly on Ross. And Tommy, for whatever shenanigans we've gotten up to in Florida. Training super hard is not a shenanigan. <laughs> that is our representation of <laughs> you. I have to say, when it came down to it, Ross and Tommy... <laughs> <laughs> he can't. <laughs> God, God. <laughs> they, they, they did all right. <laughs> Listen, it's always, the rule is, last in bed, first on the dojo. Or in this case, on the beach. Yeah. Or in this case, on the nice powdery white sands mm. of Sarasota. Yeah. No, it's, it's lovely. And it was the busiest that's <coughs> ever been. And uh, uh, Rick Sensei kind of opened it up a little bit more. And we split the classes and it worked out really well. And so long may it continue. Yeah. I thought it was one of the best trips I've ever been on, partly because of the location, but also um, really good balance of Rick Sensei's sort of philosophical style of teaching and your sort of body mechanics you know i think one of the coaches said was you pay for your progress and sweat mm. i think it was what he said or some t- like sweat that. equity yeah sweat sweat equity exactly <laughs> um, and i think the, the the two like the soft approach of rick and the the sort of more put the 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 labor in with your trainer i thought that was a excellent contrast it uh, worked really well um, very good. And then on the last day, we got to train with our, uh, Gabriel mm. um, Sensei and Amy Sensei, as well as yourself and Rick. And uh, that was really cool as well. Um, yeah. Very, very good. Um, and Did, then, sorry, go on. So, no, 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 no. Well, I was going to be about that, about, <clears throat> about um, paying in sweat. Yeah. About training hard. Mm-hmm. I've heard about training hard. <laughs> Cue me saying, well, you should try it sometime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Uh, like, how hard is too hard? I know injuries and all, sure, but, um, like, is there another way to kind of, is there another way to kind of gauge when you're overdoing it, apart from when your joints start complaining? Well, I think you've just got to kind of develop that body connection, don't you? And so, you know, everybody is completely different and one person's level of, um, of, exertion or, or maximum exertion is, is different to someone else's so um, I think I think uh, you you have to just kind of judge your body and and know the difference between like DOMS that you know delayed onset muscle strain mm-hmm. you know where your muscle get, it gets some pains and like so muscle strain know the difference between muscle strain and joint and ligament strain and so you can strain your muscles within reason you know regularly and, and you'll get those micro tears and that's what kind of lactic acid build and that's what causes the pain in your muscles and that's fine in the certain ways you can get rid of that you know ice baths for example or massage or rest of that kind of stuff but then other strain where you're damaging your joints then you've got to be able to recognize that really quickly but that shouldn't happen if you're doing good technique if you're training every day hmm. like ross and i pretty much train every day mm-hmm. nearly every day um then should there be some days where you like should you always train to the max like should you always be yeah should you always train to the max in each session or can there be such a thing as you know a nice relaxed session and the next time you're so you're doing tabata and you're dripping sweat or should it always be should there always be the same intensity every time you train i think i think your body's capable far more than what your mind is capable of so it's much more about 
like a relaxed session is not really to relax your body or to give your body a break. It's to give your mind a break. Like if you, we are ultimately kind of cavemen who are used to on a daily basis, you know, hunting, gathering and working our guts out to kind of survive. And our body is capable of that. It's only our minds that aren't. So I, I, I think that the, the relaxed kind of training sessions are much more of a mental holiday rather than anything else. Right. Well, well, that makes me think of this other thing. See, I was, um, when we do Tabata, if you do like 25 kicks in 20 seconds, if we're doing my Gary's, mm. that's 25 by eight. 400. Exactly. 400 my Gary. Is it? 200 per leg. Two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I think so. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's a bunch of kicks, right? It's like 200 per current. <laughs> but anyway, oh yeah. But anyway, then uh, I did uh, Ross and Say taught a class last Tuesday, and it was about squeezing the ankle up, uh, squeezing the heel up to the bum and getting that full compression as you go in for uh, my Gary. And it was something clearly I'd been neglecting because my hamstring was on fire after 20 kicks. So when you're doing Tabata, like that's usually a relaxed session mentally, but a very much not relaxed session physically. So should should say should I have switched on my brain more and been trying to do the kicks properly and therefore but, building a proper technique? I don't mean that. I don't mean I don't mean in terms of of mental efforts in terms of of kind of focusing on technique. I mean mental effort in terms of determination. Oh, okay. And that energy to train hard, and that wanes. I think that sometimes kind of, and certainly as you get older, that certainly wanes. You know, your your determination, your drive to train hard and to push yourself, kind of does start to slip away. And I think that's people's biggest problem is to find that kind of drive. And like so, yeah. So I don't I don't mean it at all in the terms of analysing your technique. Okay. Got it. I mean, it's like, it's like, you know, the Tabata is a good example. You know, we can do the Tabata and, and, and uh, you know, that's fine. We can, we can, we, we all do it. But then when it comes to the Oikomi and going up and down, you know, the Topikonde, uh, going up and down the, um, the, the dojo, like if people are like psyching themselves up, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And it's, and it's not physical. We're not trying to kind of hyper oxygenate our body or anything like that. It's that kind of switching that, that switch of donk, I'm mentally going to do this now. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, I think if, if, if anything that I, I picked up in Japan, or, or maybe I had it before, was just that switch. Okay, switch off now. It's not you. It's not your, this is not your, you're not thinking about this. Body's going to do it, do it, do it. And, and like kind of switch, switch that off so that, that it just happens. You just detach. Yeah. There's something we've talked about before is about being able to flick that switch in training. Um, and it is that like those moments where okay the train's about to get super tough and it is that way where now you're not going to think about how much you have to do you're just going to flick the switch and just go until you're told otherwise yeah mm. i did it the other day when rick jackson was here when we went down into Seiza, i was like oh here we go <laughs> i'm switching my brain off for the next 15 minutes yeah. i have to say <laughs> it worked <laughs> out of all the seizures he's done that's the one that that was really short <laughs> yeah, that was the shortest yeah. one i didn't feel yeah. any pain i was like yeah. oh. <laughs> but i was mentally like ready to, to <laughs> die <laughs> 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 yeah. rick jackson was here what do you think of uh, rick jackson since his course really? oh he's like he's so he says he's not an intelligent guy right you know he says he doesn't understand big words and stuff but he can wax lyrical like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like it's amazing. One of one of the clips that Scott put up, Scott Sensei has put up recently, um, where he's just talking and it, what is he talking about? Oh, he had the one where he's saying um, we're too kind to our students, mm -hmm. and he likens it to the way we spare the rod. <laughs> you know, yeah, like he's yeah. he's nearly seventy, so you know he can say something like that. <laughs> 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 When child abuse was just a kind of faux pas rather than illegal. <laughs> exactly, yeah, for him. So, oh yeah, but it was bloody brilliant. And it was, if you just take away certain bits to remove the context of a karate class and maybe replace them with something else, it's like a theatrical monologue. It's beautiful. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, I was blown away. Love the guy. It is like an unbelievable talent that he has just mm. to, when he talks about training karate, your mental capacity, mental ability, like... 
it, it is a thing that you kind of like, you know, get all dreamy eyed looking at and yeah. going, oh, wow, this is the, this is the way. Yeah. Mm. And I wouldn't even besmirch any of his utterances by like putting them next to a picture of him, you know, and then yeah, sharing yeah. it on oh, Facebook. Yeah, like, no. That would be so tasteless because yeah. you get that. You get like, oh, Shojun Miyagi once said or mm. Funakoshi Gitchen once said. Yeah. And yeah, you know, it's all very nice and stuff, but... You need to be there. Maybe in the about a hundred years, they're going to be doing that with Rick Jackson's yeah. utterances. Yeah, he said. He said something like, "He said, you know, karate is something that you it teaches you not to hold on to things, but to let go of things, to yeah. let go of everything." And like, and, and like, it was of the moment. You know, it was like perfect art, fleeting and disappears immediately as soon as it's produced. You know, amazing. Yeah, but I think he, like that comes from years of meditation. I think he has a level of connection that, like most, would, would never even realize exists, let alone kind of experience, you know? Hmm. It's funny because he has that, like, oxymoron of, like, a person, like, when he tells you the stories of his youth yeah. compared to the way that he tries to teach now, you're just like, yeah. how, how did you make this, yeah. this, this, yeah. how did you progress to this person? Because. And, and also, like, he came from the same group of people, like Bob Pointing, mm-hmm. rest his soul. Russell and you know Terry O'Neill, Andy Sherry, you know who, like I mean I I can't really speak of them because I I don't know them. I've only ever met, met Bob Pointer a couple of times, met Frank Brennan once, but that was it. But so I can't really speak of them. But but they don't strike me as being similar to him. No. But he came from that stock of crash bang wallop harder faster stronger, you know, old style KUGB karate and has evolved into what he is now which I think is unbelievable it's all thanks to the Buddhism I think Buddha. yeah the Buddha the Buddha <laughs> do your impression of Rick Jackson no, come on no, no. come on he won't listen to your podcast he won't listen to this he'll never listen to this no he's he's daddy come back to it okay serious now it's very powerful Kazamazuki Excellent, excellent. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, if you're a little bit scared, you're going to get into trouble. <laughs> yeah, that. nothing to do with it. <laughs> See, yeah, we're going to a summer camp, aren't we? Yeah, well, if we're allowed to fly by then, yeah. Oh, <laughs> when is it supposed to be on? July, I think. This is what he said about his summer camp when he spoke about it. We were saying, oh, we're interested in coming to summer camp. He's like, I tell people not to do it. <laughs> Don't come. <laughs> it's not for you. Because the demon, the, you're sitting there all day meditating. The, the demons come out, you know? <laughs> the demons come out. You're like, oh, Jesus. I can't wait. <laughs> uh, we need to practice kneeling, sitting in Cesar for long periods of time. You can you can use a cushion. That's what he said. No, oh, yeah, yeah. Just handle, a, can you? No, you to, to bite into when you scream. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of those things where he's like, "Yeah, you can use a cushion, and you're the only person that brings the cushion." And they're all like, nah. "I bring I'm a pepper pig one." <laughs> yeah. Just order. Oh. He is a bit of an, an I don't know an oxymoron, but a contradiction sometimes. When mm. Rick Jackson sends it, when he talks about. How, how much he used to go around brawling and fighting and now how he's so zen and peaceful. But he doesn't really, you know, it's not as if he says, oh, I was so silly and young. And I, I think the only reason he's not out brawling nowadays is because he's too old. <laughs> you know? I think he also sees it as part of the journey. Yeah. You know, that you can't, you know, you can't transform and, and you know, move from one aspect to another in your life if you don't start somewhere, you know? Yeah. Hmm. When so was the last time you got in a fight? Scott Sensei. <laughs> I'm much more of a peaceful guy, you know. My my way was different from Rick Rick Jackson Sensei's, you know. Okay. Last week. Last week. No, not today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the last packet of toilet roll in Tesco. <laughs> This <laughs> is your Kiai Jitsu and everyone. Whoa! <laughs> Crazy man with the toilet roll. Like. <laughs> um, but going back to what you were saying earlier about um, sort of training motivation. Um, so obviously, like you, you just every morning we stand up and align together and we train together and you lead the class and the training and it's always super tough. But what is your motivation? You know, now that you kind of have, you have nothing to prove to anyone. Why don't you just sort of t- 
take your foot off the pedal and just relax a bit? What, what is well, it that motivates you to still slog away every morning? Because I don't recognise the fact that I don't have anything to prove to anyone. I think that that's the... Like, I, I don't... Like this might sound really egotistical whilst trying to demonstrate the opposite, but like I, I, I don't recognise my position within the karate world and even the the HDKI in, in many extent many 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 yeah to much extent um, so I still have the same motivation as I did back in the day but then then at the times that I do I do occasionally allow myself to see that and just to ease off a little bit if I'm pushing myself too much but generally speaking I, I don't see that at all mm. and uh, I, I don't I don't see I don't see my level and I don't see like how uh, the the influence or input that I have into other people's karate. And I don't know if that's kind of a, I don't know if that, that's a, a natural thing that I've kind of just, you know, over the years made it into a, or rationalized in some way, or if I have purposely done that for that, that reason. But either way, whatever is inside you that doesn't see that, I've uh, allowed it to make sure that I continue to train. Mm. That's that makes sense to me because I've heard a lot of artists say something similar. Artists mm. who have earned a degree of fame or success mm. say that they try to ignore it, or when they're creating, they try to pretend that that isn't uh, where their life is at that moment. Mm. Like um, uh, there was one guy, a songwriter called John Darnell, who I um, of whom I am a huge fan. He says that he hates listening to songs written by the songwriter complaining about their life, you know, life on the road or, you know, uh, the pressures of being famous and stuff like that. He, 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 like, he thinks to complain, about <clears throat> to complain about the position that you've got, which you should be so thankful for, is in really poor taste. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so he just, he just tries to write about normal life and pretends, he, he's not super rich and famous anyway, this particular guy, but certainly he could write about the pressures of the road, being away from his family, mm -hmm. etc., etc., but instead he writes about things which other people can relate to. So if you're going to be a famous karate instructor, you should train on the level of somebody who has um, ambition to be good at karate. Yeah. Not somebody who's already in a position where lots of people listen to them or, you know, etc. I think also like it's, um, you know, we're in such a bubble. Every, er, everywhere, everyone is in such a bubble. And I was, I was actually, I started an article today and I was writing about the time that I taught at um, Pallavi's Dojo in, in Washington DC in the, in the basement of the World Bank headquarters. And she hastily organized a, a course because I was stranded in Washington DC for 24 hours. And I turned up to like a dozen black belts in this dojo. And it's a beautiful dojo, but it was, it was ISKF dojo. And, and the, there was a lady there who was the uh, a kata champion of some sort. And uh, she, uh, I said, oh, hi, you know, and she's like, oh, who are you? And I said, oh, I'm Scott, you know, and she's like, oh, you know, and I thought, well, it's a bit weird to begin with because this wasn't a scheduled class. It had been organized because I was there and she was like, uh, and so who are you then? You know, like, oh, Scott, oh, oh what's your pedigree? Yeah, and then <laughs> she's like, oh, who are you with then? Are you with the ISKF? I was like, uh, no, I'm from, uh, from Ireland. ISKF aren't in Ireland, you know, and she's like, yeah, so I, I are you at ISKF then? I was like, no, I'm with the HDKI. She's like, oh, who are they? I was like, oh, it doesn't really matter. You won't know them, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and, and I started teaching. And, <laughs> it's like, uh, and like the vast majority of the, of the class kind of soon were like, oh yeah, this is really good. And they really got into it. And she just got more and more belligerent. And like, like I don't know, three quarters of the way through the class, she just walked out. And, uh, Whoa, yeah, no, rude. She, but, <laughs> but I think it's a really useful reminder that, you know, no matter what you think you are, it's just within your bubble. And I think that, that if anything that I orchestrate in my life in terms of rationalizing my kind of deep need to push myself forward, that is something that I constantly remind myself of that is real, that is we are just in a bubble. And there are many, many, vast majority of Shudkan people who don't know who I am, who don't care who I am, who wouldn't, you know, wouldn't really subscribe to the way that I do karate. There's loads of people like that out there. So that's worth remembering all the time. We have a word for those people. Bob.
Bugs. Bugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I guess The great unwashed. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. nah. No, no. Yeah, fair. No, very, very good. Humble and well spoken, of course. Like, I, I went through <laughs> a, a humbling period when um, we had a uh, Rokas over um, when he was doing the podcast and then came to film the dojo. Mm. And he put the video up on a. Uh, on YouTube of me teaching him karate mm, and teaching mm. the, the class and stuff and it was only well, maybe about 15 20 minutes of the two hours that I taught mm. and even just with that like the torrents of abuse that I got oh, right. from the, the from the online community and it wasn't karate, just karate people it's from people from all other martial arts mm. um, I, at one point I was teaching Shirogeri and, and stuff and they were saying oh the way he's kicking's all wrong da, da, da. and then the next comment's like oh this is great and, the, and yeah, it was just yeah. a a total 50-50 split of yeah, people who yeah. saw the value in what I was doing and people who were saying that I, I've never fought a day in my life, clearly never fought yeah. a day in my life, clearly couldn't, you yeah. know, spar, like haven't done any serious yeah. sparring in my life and all yeah. this stuff. And it was like the assumptions people made and then also the, just for them to come to that conclusion, you were like, you know, wow, wow. like, you know, you think, you think you're starting to get the hang of this stuff and you're like, well, there's a whole yeah, other bunch I, of people ready to totally take you back down to reality, yeah. you know? I think also the internet does polarize people. You can't, you can't be, you can't be so so on the internet, right? Yeah. I mean, like if you just if you kind of feel neither strongly or weakly about or in any situation, then you just don't post. So it's only people who feel strongly in one way will post, and yeah. therefore it's either one way or the other. Yeah. Um, so I, I would, I would take that with a pinch of salt. And I'm, you know, sometimes I'll post videos and and it'll get negative comments. Not actually, not often, not often actually. You like so, most of the time it's very positive. But that just to me proves how much of a bubble I'm in. Yeah. But the occasional ones that I do get, which are negative, I just kind of delete them because because it's you know there's for every one negative there's one positive and and it really makes no difference. The vast majority of people are going to be in the middle. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't really mean so much on online, but I do mean kind of if you turn up to a dojo, a Shotokan dojo. Yeah where people are practicing the same kind of constructed reality as you are, then, uh, and then they dismiss you. Yeah. Then that's a different case altogether. That's worth thinking about. Well, uh, I had an experience like that teaching in America. Um, oh, yeah. This guy at the end of last year. And he... he uh, it was almost like walking into the dojo. So they booked me for, the, for a course, um, and I walked onto the dojo. And the... I could see the apprehension in everyone mm. when I was starting. Mm. You know, I, I think I, I, I go through a little bit of this initially. I think it's because I'm young and <coughs> relatively unknown, so yeah. there's a little bit of apprehension. And I was starting to do my stuff and teaching, teaching what I always do, which is normally very well received. But in this dojo, it just the, the students weren't asking me questions, they were asking their own sensei questions and oh, stuff really? like that. And I was kind of like, like yeah. hello, I'm, yeah. like, I'm teaching it, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. like ask me it. Yeah. And, uh, but they were assuming, oh, sensei already knows all this, or yeah. we already, and it was having to f battle to get the respect of their sensei so that they yeah. would then in yeah, yeah. create that respect. It was yeah. very, the, the, probably the worst experience I've had teaching abroad mm. so far, and it was very, like, very difficult to kind of, get yourself over that sort of hump of having to win yeah. the crowd yeah. sort of thing when you're already going in with that kind of I yeah think, that I think that's all the, the trade craft you know of uh, of of working a room and working a, the, the dojo you know and making sure that you you have that skill set to kind of go okay well this isn't working or I'm going to have to tweak this or I'm going to have to get him on my side or all that kind of stuff yeah. I had it like I, you know I started teaching when I was 29 well I, I was teaching internationally before I went to Japan but you know like generally speaking from when I was 29 and you know, I had one guy, I was teaching in, in, in the Netherlands once and, and uh, I was teaching a kumite drill and I just heard, it was a packed dojo, and I just heard from the background, that'll never work. <laughs> <laughs> like a heckler. Yeah. <laughs> I chose to ignore it. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if we could heckle instructors? I remember in the air. Try to do. I remember going reading from my Sandan um, at this the WTKO summer camp oh. in Maynooth, and it was yourself, uh, Richard Sensei, Scott Middleton Sensei, John Mullen Sensei, and Steve Ibo Sensei. 
and we'd try to go through our applications for a class and everyone said they sit down, take notes or watch it or whatever. I remember Steve like leaning back in his chair, arm folded, just saying, that would never work. No. <laughs> that well, his mechanics are all that would never work. That would never that would be like you're trying to get through it while he's like muttering under his bed how shit you are. And you were like, oh my god, like, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> leave me alone. Like, like, <laughs> wish Phil is better. That, that is not a unique uh, thing he would say at a grading on a grading panel. No. <laughs> There's a couple of times I've said to him, like, uh, like, I was used to sit next to him, like, sensei, like, uh, can you just, you know, a little bit quieter, please? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, that would just never work. <laughs> I know, sensei, but like, give the guy a break. <laughs> Well, it's the most awkward thing trying. You're already, you know, shit yourself. And you've got, you know, the, 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 the karate master in the corner, you know, whispering under his breath. Fucking Bob, I don't know what he's doing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, guys, I think it's that time to round off with the. <laughs> Um, Ruth, you got a fail? I've got a quarantine related fail. Go on then. So us being all quarantined, we're not allowed to have any children in the dojo because they're the ones that um, carry this disease without showing any symptoms. They're mm -hmm. all filthy and they're all infected. So no children allowed, we've been doing our classes online and uh, Grace and Ben, yep. uh, two very, very dedicated karateka, they were in two classes in a row. In fact, they had joined a beginner's class by accident, but they trained along. And then they were in the very next class, uh, which was the advanced class. It was for green belts to black belts. And um, so I, I ended the Zoom session, opened the new one, and they were there again. And so were, you know, a few other brown belts, a few other purple belts, and uh, Darren Langley. And I was like, oh, hey, Darren. Oh, Grace and Ben, you're here again. Ah. Oh. That means I can't teach the same thing twice. Next thing, whose head appears on the screen? <laughs> Scott Sensei, you're not supposed to be teaching the same thing twice anyway. <laughs> ah, sorry, Sensei. Ah. I was oh, busted. Really. <laughs> really. Um, my fail comes um, the day after Paddy's Day. So Paddy's Day, all the pubs are shut. Um, so what are you meant to do for a drink? Um, me and Rue had the great idea of buying a bunch of beer and just taking it to the dojo because we basically live in the dojo anyway. Now, when we say a bunch of beer, <laughs> I mean, we're, we're two talking, big we're, talking, we're talking 40 beers <laughs> <laughs> and a bottle of whiskey. Oh, <laughs> and uh, oh, don't and, forget the cans of Desperado. And the cans of, oh, jeez, I need cans of Desperado. Yeah, anyway, we, we, <laughs> it's, it's safe to say it was, it was a. It was a good Paddy's Day, put it that way. We still, we had our own wee parade in the dojo marching about the place. Wait, well, Paddy's Day. Um, but we ended up fairly pissed. And <laughs> we, but before we got completely kiboshed, uh, we were on Zoom to Scott Sensi and Tor and Tommy and Nicola and AJ. And uh, Scott said, remember Zoom training, morning training tomorrow. Um, which normally, we don't have morning training the day after Paddy's Day normally. In my defence, right? So, but <laughs> normally the pubs are open. I'm once like, the <laughs> once the, the the beers and the whiskey and the desperados have all been drunk, I had the, I, I said to myself, oh, I can't let the boss down. I, I can't let the boss. Really. <laughs> Listen, I, I can't let the boss down. If anyone should sleep in the JoJo, it's me. Because uh, so, I live twenty minutes away. I was I was like, let me sleep there. I was like, I said to myself. If I go home and go into my nice comfy bed, I'll, I'll never get out. I'll never get out of bed. No way. Because we had the day off on Tuesday, right? Mm -hmm. oh, no, oh, no, no, we didn't. We were still working. But I was like, we, but I was thinking, I'm not going to get up for morning training. So I decided I'm going to sleep in the dojo. I'm going to sleep in the dojo. I slept on the futon, cozied up, into bed, happy merrily. Then that was at what? What time did we leave? Three o'clock in the morning? <laughs> but then at half past five or 5.30 a.m. Neil, who does private personal training first thing in the morning, came in, woke me up and said, Ross, Ross, I'm in this morning. I'm still in this morning. Uh, and I was like, oh, Jesus. So I picked up the futon, took it into the, the changing rooms, fell back asleep. But I like, got disturbed and it was half five. I couldn't really get back to sleep properly. 
And then he came in, popped his head and said, okay, Ross, I'm away. Like, that's me. You can come back through. I was like, okay. And then I lifted it up, put the foot on back down, go back to bed. <laughs> Closed my eyes for two seconds. Then I heard the chit 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 of the door. And I went, oh, jeez. And I got up and I was like, trying to, <laughs> trying to look casual. And Scott came in and he's like, did you sleep in here, you fuck? I was like, yes, since I had to. Otherwise, I wouldn't have come training. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> and he's like, your eyeballs all skewed. He says, there's, 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 there's beer every all of the, like, there, there, well, Rude spilt beer all over the floor. <laughs> what? He did. I remember you opened them at the bar and drunk them on the roof over Oh, did that? Yeah, you okay. did. And so, I, so he's like, fucking mop the floor. And he had to talk me through how to fill up the fucking, <laughs> how to fill up the bucket, whereas the cleaner was, and I mopped the floor for him before class started. The most sense it was. <laughs> Put the mop away, then it's like, right, go get ready for training. Got my gear on, go on the dojo, and it's like, stretch, and I'm swaying. <laughs> I'm stretching, still pissed. Like, oh, jeez. And then uh, Dodo comes on Zoom. Uh, and we're like, okay, let's do some Tabata. And I'm like, oh, jeez, I say we pray to the baby Jesus to give me the rest. <laughs> and we did a whole Tabata session. I did a Tabata session, still worse for wear, shall we say. I, I could tell he was still drunk because he was really emotional. He was like, I'm doing this for you, Sensei. I mean, I'm here because I didn't want to let you down, Sensei. <laughs> I'm, I'm here for you, Sensei. I was like, you are pissed. <laughs> I believe you'll find it was more, a little bit of fucking appreciation. <laughs> Rather than the abuse. <laughs> Find up the only ball bag to turn up or stay. <laughs> yeah, I think I did the right thing by not turning up to training that morning. <laughs> well, the right thing would have been to not get so pissed, you know, mere hours before training. But the second most right thing to do was as to like, then as have what, dignity what did I say? Last in bed, but first on the dojo, regardless. You <laughs> never got to your bed is one meter from the dojo floor. <laughs> Listen, was I there or was I there? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I will n fucking never do it to, to bat a feeling like that ever again, man. <laughs> oh, horrible. Scott says it. My, fa my fail of the week's not karate related, Ooh. but it is coronavirus related. Oh, my God, then. Fine. So, so I was saying before about kind of uh, doing a, a Zoom drink with my brother and sister in law last night. And so, so you know, the, the, the Indian takeaway arrived and uh and so it's in the oven warming until I, I went can we not eat our dinner and 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 so i was like oh i don't know can we because we've got guests type thing and and i was like my brother was like eat your dinner i was like okay thank god so so you know obviously drinking and eating and that's fine it, it, but i i didn't realize that obviously the first the first thing you would eat with an indian meal is poppadoms and so i'm there right <laughs> next to the microphone as my brother's talking going out <laughs> He's like, what? What are you saying? <laughs> uh, that's it. Class. Bro, very good. All right, guys. You guys, uh, thank you for listening to this uh, quarantine podcast. Um, we, we're still mentally sane, hanging on by a thread. Hopefully you guys are too. Um, don't forget to keep training. Remember, if you take care of yourself... Then you can really take care of others. <laughs> well, where does that come from? <laughs> be oh. strong to be useful. Be of the snake? What are you? The dog. Dog. <laughs> the dog. <laughs> you want to finish up an inspirational quote? <laughs> yeah, the coronavirus is a conspiracy by millennials to free up housing stock. Oh, he's on to. Oh, I heard about the conspiracy theory about uh, toilet rolls. No. So apparently, I don't know if this is true, but I'll say apparently. <laughs> apparently it started in Australia because toilet rolls are imported from China and they were fearful that they would, they would, they would kind of, there'd be no supply because the borders were shut. So there was a run on toilet roll and that spread like a virus across the Western world. And that's why there's shortage of toilet rolls everywhere. Not because there is, but simply because it started in China. No fucking shortage of toilet rolls. <laughs> it's you! Ruth, you have just them. Pulled, Ruth has pulled out a hundred odd toilet rolls for his cupboard. I, I, I think <laughs> if you need that many toilet rolls, you've got a bigger problem than the coronavirus. Oh, oh. it's. It's <laughs> Mawashigiri. Mawashigiri practice. Was that right. what that was? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, right. thanks for listening. Oos! Oos!